Hello my soccer universe, welcome to the review of what happened in England over the weekend. We have three competitions to cover and not all teams played in all competitions of course, because that would not be possible because it was only a weekend and a midweek so far. It was also a pretty close one to what to wear. I mean, the calculation said within the Premier League, Arsenal were the best, but then United actually won a trophy and probably won the biggest matchup in the FA Cup. So I was going back and forth, but in the end I decided, okay, thumbnail United and jersey that I'll be wearing will be Arsenal. And I think it's overall uh, not a bad choice for that. But yes, it is United that we have to talk about because not only did they get the first trophy since Mourinho won the Europa League in 2017, um, they're also en route to another title since in the FA Cup they move on and with other teams bowing out in rather weird fashion, there's really not many big ones left except for the city rivals which they had in the back as of late so they might actually go for the fa cup the way they're looking at the moment united look rather solid they're never they're not a flashy team but they're a very solid team that get the wins done and get it done late which is a hallmark of united teams of the past there's all the europa league where you know yes they are also in there they ousted barcelona yes there's also arsenal in there but the question is how serious will they take that competition uh, but, you know, I think at the moment, if I look at over at the Europa League overall, uh, it's between those two because I don't see a Juventus really moving in there and scoop up the trophy and none of the other Spanish teams in there uh, seem to be strong enough and the German teams also don't quite are up for it. So, yeah, interesting stuff, interesting stuff. So I could very well see uh, United doing a cup travel. And they're hanging around enough, <laughs> it's very, very outside chance. But if there's a hiccup between the two top, 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 top two in the table, United actually might, could swoop, get, get in the title fight. Uh, but I would say this is very much an outside, 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 outside chance. I don't think it's going to happen this way. Uh, Arsenal also... Last time we talked, they had just this wonderful, uh, uh, you know, uplifting comeback win over Aston Villa with two goals in stoppage time and so on and so forth. Not a United specialty, but, you know, stoppage time is getting lo longer and longer. Scoring two in, st in stoppage time is not such a feat as it was in 99. Um, they got a very routine win and they got another uh, kind of a bit more flashy win in the midweek and are now sitting five uh, games uh, five points at, uh, ahead of City at top of the table. And yes, this is enough. If you don't really mess up, you can even afford losing to City. Uh, but the way that these teams have been going, it's anyway. Uh, you could see slip ups on either side. And I'd rather expect it more from City for some reason than from Arsenal. I know Arsenal fans are very nervous. I'm not going to say you are winning the title. You're not as crazy as the Napoli fans. Yeah, let's put it that way. Uh, so I will not say it out there, but I think despite, I think the model still favoring slightly City over ours, Arsenal. To me, Arsenal look the real deal. And I think this season ideally ends with a trophy for Arsenal. Let's put it that way. Already said enough uh, and about those two, two teams, let's uh, move in. And I want to actually start with the uh, League Cup final between United and Newcastle. Great scenes in the stadium, you know, two really big fan bases. Uh, Newcastle hoping for the first title in forever. Um, and just at the moment, and yes, Lourdes Carius was playing and actually he did not cost them the title. So that's also some uh, storyline that was going on. Just at the time when you thought that Newcastle is probably a uh, star, 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 can't control the game, they give away a stupid free kick that Shaw whips in and Casemiro heads in. Casemiro, uh, he is one of those uh, players that United needed to have. Not only were they in dire need of a defensive midfielder, but they, uh, a good one, but they also needed this winning quality. And Casemiro is synonymous with winning. What he done for Real Madrid, I mean, he wiped up this mid, mid midfield. It was an essential part, a great add for his United squad. 
And then what happens a few a few minutes later, Vejos sends it to Rashford. Yes, it was then counted as an own goal from Botman. That's what you get for not joining Milan. You score own, own goals in a big final. 39th minute and was done. Yes, Newcastle had chances. And probably on another day, in a day different day, if they score one, they could get in, in, in into the game. But in the end, it was... Uh, I, I never felt that they really can get in, in, into the game and United lift the trophy. Props to the Newcastle fans for the big choreography. Yes, they were about to lose, but they pulled up all the black and white and uh, banners and, and so on. Celebrating the occasion, um, it feels a little bit a, a title is just a little bit still away from, from them, but it's gonna come, uh, especially with the uh, backing. Think of it whatever you might, but the money is there that a title may come. But for now, the title is United and Ten Hag seemingly has turned United around because United have been a true patient uh, that needed resuscitation and he has done the job. He literally has done the, 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 the job a job that neither his countryman the Van Hal could do or uh, Jose Mourinho or any of the other coaches that United have had since then. So bravo Manchester United. And while I've never been a United fan, I gotta say the league looks like a better one if there's a United that actually plays a big role. Now fix up the stadium and let's go from there. Uh, I said it in a one minute video that the Premier League weekend had less to do with the title race because all of them got, uh, um, got wins and you know it's just this parallel run but there was more a uh, case of uh, the relegation battle where there were quite a few interesting results. We had, we had uh, for instance, Arsenal winning 1-0 at Leicester with a goal just just, just scored after the half, uh, after another one by Trossard has been disallowed. They limited Leicester to the, uh, I think, 0.23 expected goals. It was li literally one shot in the Saxon second half. So it was a rather, uh, you know, solid win. And Leicester is not a great team, but you got the win done. And then at the same time, uh, Manchester City, uh, there was never a chance that Bournemouth comes in. Julian Alvarez, Erling Haaland, I think he now has the record, record of most goals for a City player scored in one season. And Phil Foden make it all clear in the first half. And uh, that was that. And so it is really, we need to look at the relegation uh, fight where uh, really the big results came in. We had Aston Villa winning 2-0 at Everton. We had Leeds beating. So that actually meant bad news for Everton who uh, fell down. We had Leeds beating Southampton. Vital three points that they need, but Southampton really not looking good at this very moment. We had especially West Ham 4-0 over over Not Nottingham Forest. This was a West Ham team that really was relegation threatened uh, against a Forest team that actually you thought they had done the turnaround. So a pretty big win for them there as well. And uh, the relegation picture, as, as we see, looks rather interesting now. We also a very boring Palace against Liverpool uh, game. And then another one that was rather boring between Spurs and Chelsea. I mean, yes, Chelsea may have had a little bit more of the first half, but they barely uh, created any chances. Uh, they almost had Ziyech sent off, uh, this, which was rescinded, which was probably the only scene to talk talk about. But chance creation from Chelsea not happening, and Spurs just being rather um, taking care of the opportunities. And in the second half, yep, they take the first, 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 first one because um, Enzo Fernandez doesn't let the goalkeeper take the ball. He plays it out right into Skip, who scored his first goal for Spurs uh, with a brilliant shot. And that was that because there was nothing coming from Chelsea. And Harry Kane, free in the box after uh, er 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 cross uh, heads it in. Uh, as I said, it was not a great game, but it was a pretty big win for Spurs, uh, who kind of solidified in that sense their top four uh, spot. Chelsea, serious questions have to have, have had to be asked, and they are now the biggest patient um, among the big teams in England. Again, I really don't think that sacking Potter is the way to go because neither did he have a preseason nor did he have any players that he wanted to have. I mean, he has a squad that is just too hum uh, too too big. But on the other side, uh, why are you taking uh, Joao Felice off when he's basically the best player that has ever been uh, uh, that has been there uh, since ever he arrived, except for the one red card? It's rather, it doesn't look right. 
it's patience that is needed. I know that all the talk around him, it, it you know, it doesn't spark confidence. And I totally understand that. Um, as long as he has not lost the dressing room, I would let him work. The season is a write-off. I know that probably the Dortmund game is the big one that could decide whether he stays or not. But I think if he would be sacked, I think there are plenty of mitigating factors that uh, would uh, speak for him. Of course, he is at a team where we knew before that uh, managers get sacked left and right. So it's going to be definitely an interesting one uh, to see how this develops. And if Chelsea will have any plan, because at the moment, the only thing they have been doing, yeah, we buy this, we buy this, we buy this, um, but we're not looking how the pieces uh, fit together. Um, I actually come around that maybe it's not the big striker up front that, 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 that they need. You, you just need to have, have an idea of how to put it all together. And to add insult to injury, your best player, Thiago Silva, who is uh, ancient at this point in time, is injured. So... It doesn't look good going forward for Chelsea, for sure. Um, then we had uh, yesterday evening two midweek fixtures uh, where Everton actually looked rather solid, defensively solid, it got, 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 we said, for about four or 40 minutes. And then a soccer rocket uh, into the near corner, up, uh, roofs it. Uh, it. It was a brilliant goal, assisted by Sinchenko de Martinelli in stoppage time makes 2-0 at that point it was clear this was the game was only going one way it was all arsenal's way and actually they played in some really nice stuff as well Odegaard added adding a third and martinelli get to get again out of one martinelli scoring now three uh crucial goals in the last two games so watch that space but arsenal kind of underlining yeah that loss to everton was just a blip and for everton more trouble afoot and Liverpool also, after this horrible showing against Chris Pratt, it didn't look much better in the first half. Uh, it was a rather odd uh, game, not very ent uh, entertaining to watch. Fabinho probably should have sent off in the second. And suddenly, out of nowhere, Nunez scores. However, there was a foul in the build-up by Diogo Jota, which honestly, it was, was a weird one, but you know, Tierney is not a good ref. I'm sorry to say. Uh, whenever he's on the, on, the, on the pitch, I have a feeling there will be a contagious decision coming, and that's never a good thing. Um, then uh, Van Dijk header is saved uh, by Vicky Sapa, that falls to Diego Jota, who puts it back onto Van Dijk's head, and it's 1 0 for Liverpool. A little bit later, Timikas assists uh, Salah to make it 2 0. And, you know, as soon as Liverpool, as soon as Liverpool had that uh, disallowed goal by Nunez, it suddenly looked all better going forward. And with all these now, we have following standings. Arsenal five points ahead of City, 45-54. And a 1% chance for United in there. Gonna be interesting. As I said, it feels very much Arsenal. The table getting a little bit more even, but they're still quite so. We always have to look on the other side to the adjusted standings. Uh, Liverpool is now in sixth and Brighton just ahead of Fulham in the adjusted one. So they're just a slightly better record because they have quite a few. There are quite a few uh, games behind, which, uh, you know, is always a hard thing to make up, to be honest. On the bottom, we uh, it's a whole lot more even now. West Ham looking the better one. Um, still behind Wolves, but, you know, uh, having a game in hand. So Wolves, uh, be careful. We have Leeds in there, but, and we have, of course, Everton, Bournemouth and Southampton. And uh, Everton, this little lift that they had seemingly is already gone again but you know still loads of time to be played i think the relegation battle will be a truly uh fascinating one and the way leicester are playing at the moment they could you know you thought they're kind of safe and i feel them falling again uh but before we, we talk about let's, let's look at the expected standings we see uh bournemouth everton and southampton at the moment the three teams going down with forest although they look kind, kind of safe -ish, but you know have a very low rating hanging down there we see wolves we see Leeds, we see west ham um maybe starting west ham it looks kind of a little bit more safe -ish. i also don't think a crystal palace is quite out of it yet um 
the upcoming games, I mean, the next round, we have actually quite a few interesting ones. We have the Shake Duel between City and Newcastle, which is a rather big one. We have a Chelsea Leeds United game that I don't expect to be a great one, but there's a lot of things riding it. Wolves against Spurs have always been an interesting one, but of course, it's all about uh, Liverpool against Manchester United, the big derby, the big ri uh, uh, rivalry, and at a juncture where, you know, Liverpool don't look good and United look very, very, very settled. And then on Monday evening, Brentford against Fulham. And then uh, the week after, maybe not the uh, biggest uh, duels there. For some reason, I have Leicester against Chelsea looks in interesting. Of course, Fulham against Arsenal, that's not an easy one. Uh, where City have to go to Crystal Palace. So it's all kind of in London to be decided <laughs> whether we get something tighter. Um, so, yeah. We have one last. We have to look at the FA Cup. And the results there are rather, rather uh, surprising. And when I said I have some worries about Leicester, you got ousted by Blackburn Rose. Blackburn Rose are doing well in the championship. Uh, and they, they actually got the win like you do an upset. You score a goal uh, late, late, late in the first half. You double it up early in the second. And then even Ian Nacho pulls one back. It's just not enough. Fulham 2-0 over Leeds, also um, a good win. Uh, Palinia and Solomon score two goals, and Fulham is actually a team that's doing quite well. The 3-0 by uh, City over Bristol uh, was much closer fair than the final scoreline would say. Foden gave them the early lead, but Bristol was in the game, and only two late goal again by Foden, and the Bruyne settled it for City. The upset of the round came in Southampton, where Grimsby Town marches in and does it like Blackburn just before the half uh, score one just after um, both by Holohan Holohan I'm probably butchering that name to let the Tsar can only pull one back but uh, it's really Southampton are not good at this moment unfortunately they are very much primed to go down um, the other uh, really uh, league team uh, Fleetwood Town uh, lost to Burnley thanks to a late goal United against uh, West Ham was a rather entertaining cup fight I gotta say um, where Ben Rama gave uh, West Ham the lead and they looked rather settled there Casemiro scored an offside size, size, size goal but it was only until when Aguirre very late on scored an own goal in the 77th that the tides turned towards United and then it came through Garnacho in the 9 and then Fred just uh, doubled up but this 3-1 it was very much in the balance it was a very tight match and yeah this uh, West Ham probably could, could, could have done something to it you know, by the end uh, prevail and then Sheffield United oust Spurs in a performance that I think Spurs fans will not understand because uh, not only do you save your best players for the only trophy that you can uh, realistically win this season. Even when they come on, when Ken Kulusevski and Skip come on, Andaya scores the go-ahead goal for Sheffield United and you're out of the FA Cup. I guess top four is the main goal, but I can feel that Spurs fans really want to see a trophy. So uh, that didn't make much sense. We also have uh, the next round already drawn, but I don't have the fixtures yet. But I think uh, we have Sheffield United against Blackburn Rovers. I mean, Spurs would be there. This is if you're a Spurs fan, you look, yeah, we will have Blackburn Rovers at home. Yes, those are two top teams from a championship. It's not easy, but it will, could have been so easy. City have to have to play at home to Burnley, which is kind of the draw. Uh, but Burnley, uh, uh, coached by Vincent Company, I think that's an inter interesting one. Grimsby go back to the south coast uh, to face Brighton, but Brighton is a different opponent than Southampton. And then probably the best match of the round is United against Fulham. But you see it's a very open competition where we have at least one... A uh, non-Premier League team guaranteed to be in the next round. And we have also a fourth tier team in Grimsby. So rather open stuff. In any case, that was it for me for now for the Premier League. I guess we'll see each other in uh, roughly one and a half to two weeks uh, for another review video. Please let me know what you thought about the power party action. If you want to add anything to what I've said in here, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. 
And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.